so basically, uh, it's a method to analyze the links L1000 level three normalized chain compression data set. So it's basically an alternative way to um, provide signatures for experiments, an alternative level for signatures. Uh, so here's an overview of the methods. So the methods uh, have two parts. The first part is to identify significant experiments, uh, which are experiments that are significantly different from controls, right? And the second is to identify uh, significant genes that differentially express genes. Uh, for the first part, I use only the 978 landmark genes. Um, and for the second part, I use the full gene set, which is 20,000 uh, 20, genes. So the, the, the first part is, the result from the first part is good for experimental level analysis, which you do not want to involve any genes, such as clustering analysis. The second part is, for gene level analysis. For example, if you want to do enrichment analysis. So here's the experiment setup. I think Mario pretty much uh, already explained it. So uh, I want to briefly describe it here because it has the consequence on how we analyze the data. So the, the, red, the purple is control, the blue is the experiment. Um, so here is um, the concept of batch. I think a broad view called a perturbation group, so I just call it a batch. So a batch is a group of experiments that share the same plates. So here is a batch of three plates, and uh, for each plate it has control replicates and the experimental replicates. Uh, I think the, the broad range of the experiment has such, so for example, uh, for one experiment, uh, it will have the same number of replicates as the number of plates. And uh, the replicate of the same experiment will be placed on the same well of each plate. So for example, this is uh, the replicate in plate one for, for the experiment, and this is the second replicate, and this is third uh, replicate for the same experiment. Uh, here is uh, some statistics. It's about 80 control replicates per plate, and uh, generally there are two to four plates per batch. And so generally each experiment will have two to four replicates, and uh, there will be about 360 experiments uh, per plate, uh, because you have to subtract 384 by the number of control replicates. So here, um, we, so here we come to the first part, uh, identify significant experiments. Uh, actually, the method I used is uh, an adaption of the character risk direction method our lab published this year. Uh, this is a method invented by Neil Clark in our lab. I just tailored this method uh, specifically for the links data. Uh, here is a toy example to briefly explain this method. So now we have a, a gene session measurement of two genes uh, for experiment and a control. Uh, now we want to, now like first we, we use the LDA, a linear discriminate analysis to find a boundary that best uh, separate experiment from control in this two gene expression two gene expression space, and then we will find uh, uh, the direction uh, which point from control to experiment and uh, perpendicular to this uh, boundary as the as the direction that characterize how the experiment replicates are different from the control. So uh, this this sector will be a direction, so it will be a unit vector 
is a no normal one. And this will be the rep single representation of the experiment. So now let's look at the projection of this direction on to on the on the axis of these two genes. So um, basically, this will be re this direction will be representing as a vector of two components. The first component will be the projection on gene one, and the second projection will be the projection in gene two. And we can see that. Um, the square value or the absolute value of gene one is larger than gene two. And uh, so which means that uh, the control is more different than, uh, is more different from, uh, the experiment is more different from control on gene one uh, than gene two. So the gene one contribute more to the difference between experiment to control. And then in other words, that the gene Y is more differentially expressed than gene 2. And uh, then let's look at uh, the sign of the cause of the component value, whether it's positive or negative. So the gene 1 has the positive component, which means uh, the gene 1 is upper equality experiment, and the uh, gene 2 is, as you can see, it's negative uh, projection. So gene two is down regulated uh, in experiment. So basically, use one single direction representation. Um, we can use the component value to describe the first uh, how much a gene is differentially expressed, and the second uh, whether the gene is upregulated or downregulated. Now we can. Uh, ca Calculate the direction for other experiment. For example, this uh, calculate the direction for this second experiment and the direction for this third experiment. Then we can uh, compare the similarity between the experiment by use these directions. So if two directions are aligned together, which means the experiment will be more similar. If the two directions uh, the angle between the two extensions are large. They are not aligned to the same direction, so they are not similar. And uh, this similarity and the dissimilarity could be characterized by this called thin distance, which is basically a matter of the angle between two directions. So I will really call this to matter the similarity between uh, experiments. Um, this is some, this is a, a PC a principal component analysis uh, plot of of an experiment and uh, its replicates. So these are replicates of this experiment has four replicates. So these are the controls uh, for the first replicate in plate one, and these uh, the control replicates of the second plate. These are the control replicates of the third plate. This control of the uh, the fourth plate. And these dot are the experiments. So we can see there are systematic differences uh, between the data mirrored on different plates, which certainly doesn't reflect any biology. Um, so we call it the plate effect, and it should be corrected. So the very, very correct um, this effect is to uh, calculate a direction of the experiment on each plate using the single experiment replicate and uh, the control replicates on this plate. Can I ask you just a very quick question? So, so okay. Is it just Q normalized observations? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. These are quantum normalized data. Okay. But not this course, so, not the Not the this course. Like we start from level three, which are normalized data, and we uh, derive our own signature. Not, not, nothing related to this course. Um, so to correct this later effect, so then we calculate the same number of directions as the number of replicates. We call this characteristic direction replicates, uh, just CD replicates. 
calculated from plate one, this is the CD calculated from plate two, and this CD calculated from plate three. Uh, remember, we use this cosine distance to measure how much uh, two directions are aligned together. So we can compute the cosine distance for each two of these three CD replicates. And we get three distances. So the average cosine distance will be of this distance average by three. So this average cosine distance is basically uh, a representation of how much uh, these CD replicates are aligned together. So if an experiment uh, is not significantly different from control, uh, its CD replicates will be random. Then this the, their CD replicate, these replicated directions will not be aligned together. And uh, since it's a very high dimensional space, 900 or 20,000, so there's a very, very little chance that uh, that two replicate direction could be aligned together. Uh, so the average cosine distance will be large. But if the uh, experiment will, is very significantly different from control, um, their, their CD replicates should be pretty much aligning in the same direction, so the average cosine distance will be small. So basically, small average cosine distance, uh, the stronger the experiment, and uh, the larger the average cosine distance, uh, the weak the experiment. So it's basically an estimation of experiment strength. So we benchmarked this average cosine distance by evaluation of the CD method to de detect um, the experiment strength rank. So the basic assumption is that if all the other conditions are the same, the experiment of a higher dose should elicit a stronger response. So I just correlate. Um, the dose rank, uh, the experiment rank by dose, uh, and uh, the experiment strength rank for about 800 sets of experiments. And these experiments uh, in a set are only different by dose. So here is a correlation uh, of using average cosine distance, so it's about 0.6. And here is I use a um, is QSS, which is a measurement of experiment strength provided uh, in the API, uh, level four data sets uh, based on these score signatures. So you can see that the average cost and distance is uh, significantly better in the correlation between the dose rank and the experiment strength rank. Uh, okay. Um, but but with with this average cosine distance, although we can rank experiment uh, from weak to strong, but we want to have uh, a, a cutoff about to tell us uh, at which point uh, we will define as an experiment as significantly strong, and uh, which experiments are not significantly strong. So I use a new distribution to. Uh, to generate the cutoff, uh, to, to perform the calculate the new distribution, uh, you first calculate all the CD replicates for all the experiments in a batch. Uh, 
so uh, if I so this method is based on batch, so I process batch by batch. So first I, I compute all the steady records of all the experiments in batch. So this will be the CD CD replicates of uh, experiment one, and this batch has gray plate. Uh, the color will suggest the plate. So these are the CD replicates of experiment one, CD replicates two, up to CD replicates of 360. Then from this pool of CD replicates, a random draw three CD replicates. For example, it would be it might be like CD replicate of experiment one um, from play one and uh, CD replicate of experiment nine from play two and uh, CD replicate of experiment one hundred eighty one from play two. And then after I get, I will treat these threads randomly draw the CD replicates as a pseudo experiment and compute each average causing distance. This will be the new causing average cost distance one. I just uh, repeat this process by 10,000 times to get a new distribution of the average causing distance. Here's the uh, histogram. Um, from this is basically the node distribution, and uh, I just draw the upper five percent, which is at zero point nine. So this will be the cutoff. So all the experiment which has uh, average constant distance less than zero point nine will be all the significant experiment, and all the experiment that has an average constant distance larger than zero point nine, they will now. This, they will be, not be the significant experiment. So after calculate uh, the, the characteristic directions for each experiment and uh, fill, fill out all those experiments that are not significant, we can do some clustering analysis. Um, here's show some examples. So this is a multi-dimensional scaling of the character directions of the part of the links data, this RGP04, uh, significant perturbations. And the distance between the, the experiment are narrowed by cosine distance. So in this, this part, in this part of the links data, they are like and the perturbations to fix different uh, breast cancer cell lines. Uh, the ligands are class, classed into four categories, the growth factors, the interference, the interference, and uh, the, this IL, IL interference. Um, so you can say, use this characteristic direction, um, ligands are separated by their class. But while you use the J score signatures, um, you'll get a cluster like this. So it's pretty much overlapped. You cannot discern uh, patterns. And actually, the character direction can reveal more subtle differences. So here, I color the same set of dots by time points instead of like in the class. You can say, like, um, for some ligands, they are separated by time points. So these are the perturbations at time point one, and these are perturbations of time point uh, 24. But if you use this cost signatures, it looks pretty much random. You can't see any patterns um, from this MDS plot. Can I, can I ask you another question just to... Uh, we're on the same mm. page about the Z scores. So these Z scores are moderated Z? Yeah, yeah. Like before, before, like the broad published the, the moderated Z score for some part of the data. Okay. Thanks. So um, the, the distance is the marrow the Euclidean distance. So you, you can say in terms of clustering analysis, um, the, the 
the cockroach direction method is pretty much much better.